Okay, I'm going to go over this problem I assigned it to my MBA class. And uh, I noticed several of the students, when they worked out this problem, they looked like they might have been a little bit confused with what was going on. So I'm just going to show us a little bit more advanced techniques on Excel and how to solve this problem that the book maybe didn't show you. So uh, I got it out of this book right here. It's a very good book, uh, Principles of Finance with Excel. And it's a financial modeling textbook. Uh, the authors are Simon Beninga and Paul McFady. Makati. And Simon Beninga passed away a couple years ago, but uh, he, he, he's done several. He has another financial modeling textbook that he had written. Um, it's a very good book if you're interested in modeling finance in Excel. Uh, I'm going to move it to the side. Oops, we'll move it to the side for now. And uh, I'll, I'll leave the ISBN down here if you want to take a note. So anyway, I just I, I took this out of this book. This is a common problem you'll see in a lot of different books. Um, but here I just took all this information. Your the cost of capital is 10%, and these are the cash flows you're going to get. So you're going to invest $150 at time zero. At the end of year one, you're going to re receive $1,000. So this those two cash flows is, it looks like it'd be a pretty good pretty good deal, right? Invest $150 and get $1,000 back. But the project's not over, then you have to invest another thousand dollars and get a hundred dollars back. So you have to complete the project, you can't just stop there, right? So it's a, a three-year project. And we want to know, do we want to take this project if we have to borrow 10%? If we have to borrow this money we're borrowing, if we have to borrow it at 10%, you know, do we want to take this project? So we're going to have these, this is our investments and this is going to be our returns, right? Um, so. We, uh, so part A, we want to say, do we want to take it? And part B, should it be accepted? So I'll just go ahead and put the solution up here. Uh, save room on the screen. Uh, and uh, so probably the easiest way to do it would be to calculate something called the net present value. And the net present value formula, I'm just going to equals NCV. And net present value first in ball here shows you what's the rate first, which is this. So how much are you going to borrow your money for? And you got to be careful for a net present value because it doesn't say value zero here. It says value one. The net present value, it already knows you're already at zero, so you already know this is a negative 150 because it's time zero. There's no interest being earned on it. So it starts here. I kind of wish it would start at time zero, but it doesn't. That's the way it works. So you're going to highlight these. And then you have to make sure you do add time zero back in outside of NPV. And then, of course, this is going to be formatted as dollars. Take out a couple plates, take it out two places. So, so the net present value is $7.78. Or $7.78. Let me put the formula in here. Uh, so, uh, so the question is, should we should we take the product, should we take or reject? So it will equals if uh, this is greater than zero, take. Otherwise, reject. Okay, and of course we want to take it. So the answer. Let's go ahead and copy this. So the answer is take in this case at that at that cost of capital. Okay, um, now this is a little bit weird because one thing you gotta be careful, uh, this is one of the reasons people don't prefer IRR because uh, in this case there's a sign change, or there's two sign changes. It's okay to have one sign change where you invest money, money's coming out of your pocket, right? So it's negative and then you're getting positive. But if you have another money coming out of your, you know, out of your pocket, then there's two sign changes. So here's a sign change and here's another sign change, right? So there's two sign changes, so there's going to possibly be two IRR, most likely two IRR. So if you use IRR, normally the decision rule for the IRR is if it's greater than your cost of capital, you would you would accept. In this case, that's not going to happen, right? Because uh, so so normally so for Part B, they want to know the range where it'd be accepted. Now one way you could do it, you could go IRR. I can go IRR. I'll call it low. Usually, if there's two. Uh, let me let me let me subscript this as L for low. Okay, so I'm going to go equals IRR, and this is where I, this is why I don't like why NPV starts with one because IRR does start with zero. It does start with the first corpse flow. So so I'm 
I'm going to use, um, if you, it says here, you know, when I do a comma, next thing it tells me to guess. And um, so, I, so I'm going to, I'm going to use zero as my guess, so I don't have to put it. And then always make sure you take IRR, IRR up to a couple places. So that's, that's the, that's the low side. So, so it's, so the basically here the NPV is zero. So anything above that, I'll show you in a second, anything above that is going to be, uh, take the project, right? So any capital at 8.40%, you're not going to make any money, right? But anything above that, then you're going to make, then you're going to make money. All right. Let me do the RR high side. Call it uh, H for high, capital H. Oops. Okay, and here we're gonna go equals IRR, and again it's gonna be these values, and then I'm gonna guess a bigger number. So let's guess like a thousand percent. I don't know where it's at. We'll if I have to do a fairly big number, because if I'm close to this one, it's going to zero in on this one. So I want a big, big, tall number, or a, very, a large number is on, on the right side of that error. So it has to go past it, it won't get to this. Okay, so then that also take that out to two places. So right there, we already know the range. The range is going to, we already know at 10%, it got accepted. So anything between here and here, 10% is between here and here. So since we know 10% it was accepted, we know that it'd be any between these two two uh, costs of capital, this NPV would be positive. So that, that's actually the short way to do it. Um, but it's actually informative to graph this. So let's go ahead and graph it. So this is the answer to B. All right. So um, now. It's informative to graph this, so I'm going to show you guys something kind of cool. It's called a data table. So I'm going to do a, a range of cost of capitals. And I don't want that yellow, so let me uh, format it normal. And here, I'm going to put my NPV. And I calculated my NPV right here, so I'm going to go right here. you got to do this exactly how I'm doing it. So here I here I put the formula I calculated NPV. And I'm going to do is so I'm going to create something called a data table. So I'm going to, so I'm going to do R. I'm going to start at 0%. And let's go by uh, 25 percent. Just and we know that we know our rank, we want to go between here and and like 400. We'll go to, maybe go to 500. So I'm going to highlight the first two to give Excel the idea, and we'll go up to 500 percent. So maybe we go by 10 percent just to get a little bit more granular. We'll go zero. We'll go by 10 percent up to 500 percent. Uh, you can see it says 500 there on the the side as I go. So we'll go out to that. And what I'll do is I'll, you have to do it since I'm doing a data table you have to you have to this so this is my range that I want to calculate NPV. So the NPV is here. And it kind of has to be R and you have to put the formula here, right? So um, so basically this is where I calculate NPV. So I'm going to say, I want to calculate this NPV for all these different R's. So then you have to highlight it exactly like this. Everything has to be in the same place I put it. All right, so, so now that I have it set up, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to data, what if analysis, data table. And uh, since these are columns, it's asking, what are you varying? Well, I'm varying this R right here. When I did this calculation, I was using this R. So I'm varying it here, and I go OK, and it gives me these. So let me go ahead and format them the same. So I'm going to go home, format painter. These are all dollars. So now it's actually, now it's actually showing the different, uh, the different uh, values as we go, right? And uh, you can see right here around four, between 440 percent and 450, it changed, and from here, so let's just graph this now. Real quick. I'm going to take it. I'm almost done here. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to highlight it now, and I'm going to. Uh, Insert, and I'll insert. Uh, let's just do a scatter chart. It'll be like this. You can see that the between the and we know that this point from here we already calculated. This point is eight point four percent, and this point is four hundred forty percent. 
But then we call this an NPV chart. So you can see that on the NPV is positive, and remember our decision rule is if it's positive, we take it. So, so this is one of the reasons why people don't like IRR, they prefer NPV as a decision rule, because um, it, uh, you don't get these weird things happening like what you do with IRR. Okay, so at 10%, you would take it. This is the range of, of uh, capital. This is the range you take it if you use IRR. Okay. Um, Anyway, hopefully that makes sense. So we answered the two questions. Uh, and uh, I'll try to put a link to this particular file in the description down below. So if you want to look at the file, it should be there. All right, thank you. Bye.